Good day everyone, Brad here and welcome back for another Top 5 Countdown. This is going to be uh, my list here of favorite attractions at Walt Disney World. Now for this list we're looking across all four of the parks. I'm taking my favorite ones and just counting them down from bottom to top. Uh, it just so happens that there's an attraction from each park in this list. I didn't plan on that to happen, uh, but that's how it is. So each park has representation here, uh, one park having two rides. Now I will say that I have not been on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway yet. I'm fairly certain that would be on this list. So taking that one out of this equation, these are my top five Disney World rides, starting with number five. Alright, so first up we have Living with the Land over in Epcot. This ride I feel like is hugely underrated. Very enjoyable boat ride. It's kind of like the uh, relaxation point of your day. You can do Spaceship Earth or this. It was a tough call between those two actually, but I give Living with the Land the nod because one, I feel like it has more rewritability. Because every time you go through those greenhouses, they may have different things growing or they will change up what they have based on the time of year or the events. And one of the uh, little known things about it is during the holidays, they have a holiday version where they actually put a bunch of lights and it's fantastic at night. Uh, it's a long ride, it's a relaxing ride, and best of all, there's never a wait. This thing is always a walk-on and it's in the Land Pavilion, which is already just a fantastic place in the park. So living with the land, highly recommended, very enjoyable boat ride. The uh, Three Caballeros is a fun one too over in Mexico. But overall, this, this is my number five ride, living with the land. Don't pass this one up. Most people might find it boring. Some find it enjoyable to each their own. But uh, that's, that's where it's going to sit on this list. Number four really surprised me because this is one of those rides that I never rode. And that's going to be Splash Mountain. I, I never cared for it, I didn't want to get wet, it just didn't seem worth the payoff. Uh, until I started going to it here at Disneyland, and it became one of my favorites here in Disneyland. And then when I went back and rode it down in Disney World, I realized how much better that version is than Disneyland's. Fantastic ride, very long, I believe it's like almost 15 minutes. Uh, the music is really what makes this a fun ride too. You'll find yourself just singing the tunes all day. The characters, the animatronics, the storyline, fantastic ride really love this one the weights are typically not too bad and another thing that works out is if you sit in the back i've learned that you stay a lot more dry than if you're sitting up in the front and the one down in disney world they actually have side-by-side -side seating which is really great uh, it helps reduce how wet you get and if you're alone you can kind of scoot yourself in the middle and you'll be even better off really great ride love it i kind of regret passing it up all this time but at least i know it's there now and it is one of my favorites in the Magic Kingdom. All right, for number three, we have the People Mover, and this is the one that Splash Mountain lost down to. These are my favorite two rides in the Magic Kingdom, but People Mover is just, one, it has that classic feel, two, it's that midday break ride, and three, it's just really fantastic to get some great views of the park. It's like people watching, but instead of sitting on a bench, you're on a moving ride vehicle. It really is kind of the definition of Magic Kingdom, at least in my opinion. When I think Magic Kingdom, I think of the uh, People Mover. Because unfortunately, they got rid of it a long time ago at Disneyland, and there's no plans on bringing it back. But it's nice that we can still ride it down there in Orlando. It's also great that you get the voice announcing everything you're seeing. Uh, going by the Carousel of Progress is always a lot of fun, and going inside some of the buildings. But best of all is the old Epcot model design that you get to drive by. Really cool model and it's really nice that they added it in there. That's something they totally did not have to do, but it really solidifies this as being, in my opinion, the best ride in all of Magic Kingdom, but there's still two more that are above it. Then for number two we have over at the Animal Kingdom, Flight of Passage. This is my shortest lived favorite ride because uh, I never got to ride it until recently. And I was very skeptical. Um, if any of you have seen any of my other videos, you know I am not a fan of Soarin' at all. Like, I really dislike it. And Flight of Passage is kind of using the same technology, same idea. So I didn't think it would be as great as everyone said it was. Everyone really, really 
blew this ride out of proportion. I mean, it still gets those three hour waits and it's open a couple of years ago. But after finally riding it, it was absolutely worth it. This, this ride, it's just, it's hard to explain. It's more of something you have to experience. It has like a, just a feeling you get riding it. You got the great sense, you got the, of course the Banshee, like wings flap, the breathing you feel. The, the picture looks great no matter where you sit. That's one of the big things that has this beating Soren. Soren looks terrible in most of the seats. But this ride looks great, feels great, the music's great. Can't say enough positive things about it. It does still get those long lines. That is one of the downsides. But even regardless of that, every time I go to Animal Kingdom, I will always wait for this ride. It doesn't matter how long it is. Always worth it. So that is Flight of Passage number two. And no surprise here, number one is Rise of the Resistance. This is what I meant by Flight of Passage was short-lived because it was my favorite for a month. And the next time I went down there, this ride was open and this became my new favorite. It's just hard to put anything up against this. Even if you don't like Star Wars, it is just technologically impressive in every way. Multiple ride systems, acting involved, it's always fun to see the First Order officers play the part, really getting into it. I'm sure they have more fun that way. This is another one of those rides where the length is what makes it great too. And there's different paths, so you can be in the front or back transport, at least from the beginning, and you will take separate paths. So it really adds quite a bit of rewritability on this. Fantastic job all around. The only complaint I have about the ride, and it seems probably silly, is the Kylo Ren animatronic at the end when the wall bursts behind him he does like this it looks like a weird dance like his feet just don't move so that's the only complaint i have on this otherwise perfect ride absolutely love it make sure you get those boarding passes though they could be a complete pain uh, i have videos on how to do that as well definitely worth getting up early to ride this one all right so that is going to do it for my list of top five attractions in all of disney world do you agree with this list, or do you think it's completely ridiculous? Let me know what some of your favorites are. I'd love to hear. But that is going to do it this time. Thank you all for watching, and the caravan is moving on.